You know, so many people love and admire Katie Couric. The award-winning journalist has shared some of the most personal events of her life, really to help others. Recently, Katie revealed that she had breast cancer. She joins us this morning to share the details of her treatment and the importance of annual screenings. Nice to have you back on Good Day. It's great to you see you. You look both. nice and healthy. Thank Do you, you feel that way? I feel good. Yeah, I've been fighting a cold, but I feel much better. You can't make out with me yet, but oh. um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Darn Rosanna. It. <laughs> sorry, Rosanna. But yeah, I'm feeling really, really well. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be able to talk about this because I think so many women don't, A, have put off their mammograms, and it's, mine was six months late. I wanted to ask you about that. Did you have any inkling before you went for your mammogram no, that something was up? Not at all. I was going for my annual test. Um, like so many people during the pandemic, I kind of got off schedule, yeah. mm. and I was at my gynecologist for a pap smear, and she said, Katie, you know, you haven't had a mammogram for a while, and I was like, what are you talking about? I just had one. And she said, no, you haven't had one since December of 2020. Mm. And I was like, oh God, really? And so I made an appointment right away and I went and that's when my breast radiologist, Susan Drossman, who's also Rosanna's yeah, by the way. Yeah, she's fabulous. She, who, she's who I love, the best, yeah. Uh, said, turn off your video camera because uh, my producer was videotaping it on my phone because I just wanted to remind women yeah. of the importance of getting screened and suddenly she's like I see something I don't like here. Oh my goodness and I know that you listen I, I knew, knew your husband Jay and um, obviously that must have been such a, a shock to you to find out that you had cancer. You know I felt like I had paid my cancer dues you know right, I've done I so know. much advocacy work on the other hand when you think of the statistics, one in two men, one in three women will be diagnosed in their lifetimes. My sister Emily died of pancreatic cancer when she was 54. Wow. You know, I mean, it's sort of ubiquitous. And, you know, of course it's a shock. On the other hand, both Jay and Emily were diagnosed with very advanced cancer. They both had metastatic cancer. And the prognosis in both their cases was really bleak. And so knowing that I was, this was detected at a stage where it could be treated well, the prognosis is excellent, I felt so blessed, honestly. And, you know, it's just, this is not my first rodeo, and I know a lot about cancer. So if it can be detected early, when it's most treatable, you're in really good shape, and that's why screening is so critically important. And, and you've already had the treatment. You've been through the treatment. I, I, mean, been, you, I had a lumpectomy in July, and I had radiation for, you know, the month of uh, 15 rounds in September. And now I have to go on something called an aromatase inhibitor, which suppresses estrogen because my tumor is, uh, is hormone receptor positive. So I'm sort of, I, I think, you know, the, the tough stuff is behind me, although aromatase inhibitors have some side effects, so I'm trying to figure that out now. You know, very personal for our family. My wife just went for a mammogram. She's 36 years old, everything was okay, but it was just kind of that reminder, you know, that you have to stay on top of these things. And I know for you, you've paid close attention to this, and there are some things that women should look out for. Definitely. First of all, get screened, everyone. I mean, set up, make an appointment for your mammogram. Secondly, I have dense breasts, and you, that's only indicated on a mammogram. Like, you can't feel your breasts and say, oh, I have dense breasts. It's something that's indicated through mammography. So if you have dense breasts, sometimes it's difficult to diagnose a cancer because the density, the sort of fibroglandular stuff in your breasts, comes out white on a mammogram and so does the suspicious area. As Susan Drossman said, it's like trying to find a snowball against a field of snow. So since 45% of women 40 and over have dense breasts, they should inquire about additional screening. And right now, 38 states mandate that doctors notify patients of breast density, but they don't really tell them what to do with that information. I think the FDA is gonna be changing that I hope by the end of the year and mandating it big. in all states. Yeah. And then 16 states in the district require insurance companies to pay some, some or all of, of ultrasounds. 
And all the, by the way, they're also working on fast MRIs, which is a whole other subject. But it would be great if, if all women had access to this additional screening, not just women of means who can afford it. And so I'm working with Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut to see if we can introduce legislation that will require insurance companies to cover additional screening because there are so many women who need it. And it's, you know, it doesn't have any radiation, doesn't have any harmful effects. And as Susan Drossman says, it's a disgrace that it's not accessible to all women. Absolutely. Healthcare. I mean, obviously, you've been on the forefront of colonoscopies after you lost Jay. And by the way, that was a very flawed study um, that was recently in JAMA. I just want everyone to know that colonoscopy is still a great alternative, as are stool tests, and people need to get that. screened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah people need to get screened for yeah. colon cancer, which is the number two killer of men and women uh, combined, and cancer killer. Absolutely. And and now you're you're taking on you know breast cancer and and getting, you know, those ultrasound screenings for everybody. But this one has to be personal for you. I mean, everything's been personal for you, Katie, but this is your health now. Yeah. And that's, and you know, you have two young, young daughters. Well, they're not so young anymore. They're 31 and 26, but obviously I want to be around as long as I can. And, you know, I, I'm just trying to really focus on my health and, you know, I've always pretty much been a healthy person. Yeah. I exercise, I eat right most of the time. <laughs> and unless Except I go, when we're together. <laughs> unless I go to Fresco, then I don't eat Unless so. we're together and then we just like. And they mm. bring out all these desserts and I lose my mind. But yeah, you know, listen, I have always tried to take my personal situation. I think I went into journalism as a public service to help people become better citizens, lead longer, healthier lives, I mean, all kinds of things. And I feel like if I have a platform and I can help inform and educate people and increase awareness, it's something that I really want to do. And that's why I decided to go public with this because, I mean, they've seen my colon. What else can I do? As, yeah. I, as I told somebody, <laughs> I draw the line at a pap smear. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> But she's always been so open with, 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 in such a high profile position for you, always so open with some of these health things. I know so many people appreciate that. I mean, that's what we 100%. do. Well, I just want people to listen and take action because you have to advocate for your own health. Okay. So, Katie, um, is there, um, I know we should follow you, Katie Cork and Katie Cork Katie Media. Katie Cork.com. Yeah, yeah, we have our own media company and a newsletter called Wake Up Call, which is a great adjuvant news source next to Good Day New York. I, and, do, uh, I do look at what you're talking about in the morning. Oh, you do? Good, I do, yes, good, of course. Good. Anyway, you can sign up for that. I'm doing a podcast called Next Question. I'm executive producing an incredible documentary about ALS called No Ordinary wow. Campaign. I mean, it is unbelievable. I can't wait for you all to see it. And it just won audience favorite at the Chicago Film Festival. And so, um, yeah, and working on You're some busy. scripted projects. It, it's nice. It's fun. Yeah, and I have a lot of flexibility. That's nice. Well, listen, I'm, I'm happy that you're healthy. Thank you, Rosanna. So. And I, my mental health is good, too, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Your I mental like, health, I'm Katie, not so sure about. Katie Couric is here to talk her me about her mental health journey. I was like, what? But wait a second. The, okay, so maybe you were not here for mental health. I think health. You, were, you were still on the chirping birds. Oh, come on, Minnie Repertin? <laughs> yeah. Is that not a great song? Dan, I'm still good to luck to you. Rosen, I thought you grew up in Brooklyn, so I don't know what kind of what kind of birds are out there tweeting in the wind. What do you mean? There are birds in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All right, oh boy, you just lost There's viewers in Brooklyn. <laughs> Come on now. All right, anyway, Katie, thank you. You're welcome. Happy Thanks you're for healthy. having me, Dan. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Katie.